The state legislature has the reputation of being unfriendly to businesses, especially small businesses, including agriculture, unless it is a mom and pop operation with a cute little roadside stand. If you go to Congress, what will your position be pertaining to small businesses and especially agriculture? You know, not to embarrass Julia, <laughs> but you're right, here, here goes nothing. Uh, many of you may know that there was a time when you could go to the Wassermans and harvest your own Christmas tree. And one day, and if I get my facts right, Julia, don't even correct me, somebody who came to harvest a Christmas tree got injured somehow and thought the right thing to do would be to sue Julia and her husband for opening up their property so that people might derive some pleasure in harvesting Christmas trees. So I worked with Julia to try to pass a bill that said to farmers, if you let people onto your land, you ought to be able to do so free of being held liable in a lawsuit. And I, for one, I'm, a, I'm proud to have been the Connecticut Farm Bureau Legislator of the Year on three separate occasions, <laughs> a hat trick. And the reason that the Farm Bureau has supported me is because I've done my level best to restore agriculture to its rightful place in Connecticut's economic array of opportunities. And I continue to do that. So um, the question was, what would I do to help small business? Yeah. I do think that our tort system is, uh, is a, a real threat to small businesses in terms of the insurance that all of us are forced to pay. But particularly the agricultural sector needs to have some freedom from the fear of liability. Thank you. Lisa. Well, I don't just talk about small business and regulations. I live it every single day. And I'll give you an example. I own a bowling alley. And the bowling alley I bought from a man in his 70s. And you know, here's one guy, and he's trying to market and, and operate and do his books. And the health and, uh, and food department comes in, two separate people, the milk person and then the, the hot guy, the hot food guy. And then the, the liquor commission comes in. And then there's the lanes inspector, inspector that comes in, the payroll tax audit and the sales tax audit. At the end of the day, this guy doesn't have time to operate his business. So we have many, many, many regulations to roll back in Washington. But you know what? The number one I roll back is Obamacare because it's killing small businesses. It is increasing costs. It is creating so much more paperwork. That's the number one thing that I roll back. And then number two, I pull back Dodd-Frank because small businesses can't get loans because Dodd-Frank is making it much too risky to loan to a small business owner. <laughs> So those are the two things that I rolled back and that would help a lot of my um, peers in small business today. Thank you. Uh, Mark. Uh, just in the last week I got a pack of papers from the Department of Revenue Ser Ser uh, Services which is the business entity tax. Ooh. Some of you have gotten that. I got a pack this big. I have uh, 70 or 80 entities uh, like Lisa and uh, each time I open up the envelope it's $250 which is really stifling, especially if some businesses are not making money, not doing business. We should abolish the business entity tax, Andrew. Not have it, but let's get rid of it. We have to make this state more friendly. This state is probably number 49 and number 50 in terms of being friendly for business. We have to roll back regulations. We have to make it palatable for folks to go to work at 8 o'clock in the morning and come back at 6 o'clock at night. Make it a pleasurable experience to go to business and not be overwhelmed all these regulations day in and day out. Justin. I think the way you help small businesses is by helping all businesses, all small businesses, bringing down the business tax rate. We have the highest corporate tax rate in the entire industrialized world right now. And we got to this point, I believe, by having the government pick winners and losers. By having the government out there deciding who's going to get subsidies, who's going to be taxed at this rate, who's going to be taxed at that rate. And pretty soon, we've got businesses that are getting more and more tax load put on them because we're favoring other companies. Uh, we talked about agriculture now. I'm not talking about Christmas tree farms here. I mean, they're the best things in the world. But we've got subsidies here out west on some of these big farms. We've been paying people not to grow things 
since the Great Depression. And we wonder why prices are going up now at the grocery store and we have to import food from overseas. Get rid of subsidies as much as we can. Level the playing field for all businesses. Get the government, state and federal, out of the business of picking winners and losers and let all businesses do well at a lower tax rate. And you'll see this country explode. You'll see corporations, if we can bring that tax rate down to 10%, make it one of the most competitive in the world instead of the worst, you would see companies flooding in from Europe, from Mexico, from Canada. You'd have the president of Mexico call the president of the United States to complain about us stealing all their companies and jobs. Well, we're not going to get there if we have a government in Hartford and in, and in Washington, frankly, both parties are very guilty of it, who want to pick the winners and losers. Let's get the government out of that business, and I pledge to you that I will do that in Congress. Thank you, Dustin. Mike. Again, it, it's a, to me, this is a real simple answer. Get government out of the way of our small businesses and our businessmen. American businessmen are still the best in the world, whether they're large businesses or small businesses. You know, this running for, running for office for this office gets in your blood and your mind. I woke up this morning to the radio on WTIC and I heard alarming news. President Obama is ready to propose that the corporate income tax be lowered. What a shock that, you know, six, seven, eight months before the election, he finally sees the light and realizes what will actually bring business back to the United States and bring profits back to the United States. Now his proposal is to drop it to 25%. It's currently at 35%, highest in the world. But you know, that's not nearly far enough. But that's how you create jobs. Now as far as with agriculture, one of the Farmington still has farms. So, you know, and we have active farms. And one of our farmers had a great new idea. He's a dairy farmer, and he was getting creamed. Many creamed. That's a good <laughs> <job>. <laughs> I didn't even mean to do that. <laughs> but he was just, uh, you know, again, dairy farming is not a good industry to be in right now. And so he came up with a great idea. He wanted to manufacture, create yogurt. And what he had to do is, remember, this is a, an entity that the town uh, owns the land. He leases the land from the town. But what the town and this farmer had to do to create this business was simply outrageous. And you know, he finally, it took him about 18 months to get it off the ground. But it just shows you, here's someone who's ready to be an entrepreneur, who's ready to put some of his own money out there. And what does he get from government regulations and visits you know, from regulators every single day? And it, it just shows the difficulty that, that's uh, involved. <laughs>